ಓಂ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮ ಶಿವಾಯ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಅಮ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಮನೋದಶೇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷಂ ಹೃತ್ಪದ್ಮಗೋಲಕೆ ಸ್ಥಿತ ತಾಂತಕರಣ ಬಾಹ್ಯೆ ಸ್ವಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯಾಧ್ವಿನೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದ ರೂಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೆನ್ ಓರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ as it depends on the organs of sense and action for its functions in relation to external objects it is called an internal organ antakarna though light is in the whole room the lamp is said to be the main place for the light so also the mind is in the whole body but its special place is in the heart the seat of the mind was believed to be the heart in ancient days as brain is thought so nowadays text 13 akshesvar tarpite svetad gunado shavicharakam satvang rajastamashchasya guna vikriyate hitai the mind inquires into the merits and defects of the objects which are perceived by the senses sattva rajas and tamas are its three constituents for through them the mind undergoes various modifications gunas the three modes of nature are difficult to define vidyaranya defines them according to their effects the senses give the knowledge of objects and the self is present everywhere unconcerned so the discriminating faculty or mind is acceptable as the agent text 14 vairagyang kshanti raudyaryang ityadhya sattva sambhava kama krodha lobhayat non-attachment forgiveness generosity etc are products of sattva desire anger avarice effort etc are produced by rajas compare with bhagavad gita 137 through 11 161 through 3 text 15 alasya bhranti tandraya vikaras tammasotita satvikai punya nispatti papaut patischa rajasai lethargy confusion drowsiness etc are produced by tamas when sattva functions in the mind merit is acquired when rajas functions demerit is produced text 16 tamasair no bhayam kintu vritayus vritayukshapanam bhavet atraham pratyayi kartet yevam loke vyavastiti when tamas functions neither merit nor demerit is produced but life is wasted for nothing of the modifications of the mind that of i consciousness is the agent in the practical world we also do the same when egoism or personality becomes attached to intellect it is the practice of the world to connect all acts with agents namaste so the mind antakarana which actually includes all the mental modifications including intelligence false ego memory and so on imagination whatever this is called the internal organ antaha means within karana means the cause 
So the cause of human beingness is within. It is the mind. The mind gives memory, logic, reasoning, forgetfulness, dreaming, and so on, and is the basis of the false ego, identifying the self with the body. And of course, this is a superimposition, because Brahman is not an individual. Brahman is beyond individual differences. Brahman has no boundaries, no divisions, no parts, no actions even. So Brahman is above all this individual stuff. Huh? The karma, the bodies, the actions, the reactions, cause and effect, objects, ownership, identification. These are all mental functions of the mind when in connection with the three modes of material nature. Now, the three modes are discussed quite nicely in Bhagavad Gita. So if you haven't looked it up already, you should go to these passages that are referenced in the purports and look at the qualities of the three modes, the gunas, trigunya, because they are best defined by their results. Sattva guna, the mode of goodness, produces good results and eventually brings enlightenment and liberation. The mode of passion, where one pursues objects of sense gratification, brings demerits, bad karma, suffering, and rebirth in the human form. The mode of ignorance is just a waste of time, a waste of effort, intoxication, sleep, madness, illusion, any kind of ignorance, drugs, and so on, all bring not only suffering, but rebirth in the animal kingdom. So we should orient our lives so that we are in sattva. We are in goodness. That means following the instructions in the scriptures. It is not that we can blithely declare ourselves to be Brahman and thus above all the modes of material nature. Huh? Oh, I'm God, so I can do whatever I want. No, no. This is a misunderstanding. The body and mind are still subject to karma. And even though it's true, yes, we are Brahman. We also have to live in this body. And if we perform actions that lead to rebirth, we're going to be reborn. So one should cast aside the modes of ignorance and passion and remain situated in goodness according to the instructions in the scriptures. This is the safest course. Now, Many people will argue with this and bring up many examples of enlightened beings who demonstrated all kinds of material activities. Huh? But these are due to prarabdha karma. What we're talking about here is when the mind desires and acts as an agent in the modes of material nature. In other words, we should desire only the mode of goodness. And our willful acts, our imagination, our intention, and our will should be focused on sattvic things alone. Yes, there may be some rajasic and tamasic activities, but those are the result of previous karma. That way we become free from their reactions. And even though it may happen in the body and mind, we're not identified with them. That's the point. So we want to live a life of goodness, the life of a sage, the life of an enlightened person. That means we should cultivate only those desires that are approved by Shastra, 
approved by the scriptures. What does that mean? It means detachment from all material things. It means rising early in the morning and performing sadhana, study of the scriptures, meditation, performance of puja, chanting of mantras. All these things are valuable even for the enlightened beings. Why? They improve our quality of life. If you want to be happy, cultivate sattva. Sattvic food, sattvic activities, sattvic thoughts, sattvic feelings. These all lead to happiness, especially cultivation of spiritual consciousness. Consciousness that I am Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. Uh, Tattva Masi. Thou art that. What is that? That is Brahman. The original cause. The ocean of consciousness. That which is beyond goodness, passion, and ignorance. Beyond activity beyond karma. This automatically produces a feeling of happiness, not the kind of happiness that we usually think of connected with the mode of passion, but the happiness connected with relief, dropping all these desires, letting go of all these identifications and possessions just relaxing all this feeling of responsibility over the things in the material world and simply staying in meditation all the time as far as possible. It might not be possible at all times. Sometimes we may get overwhelmed by the mind and senses. After all, the mind has to keep up with these ten senses, you know? <laughs> five knowledge-acquiring senses and the five active senses. And we also have to maintain the body nicely. So there are duties to perform. But at all times, we should remain aware that we are Brahman. We are consciousness. Without consciousness, there's nothing. No life, no mind no activities, no body, no world. So consciousness is the fundamental thing. Consciousness is that which precedes everything else, which is senior to everything else, which is the substrate of everything else, and everything else is simply a projection on consciousness, an overlay a superimposition, a dhyasa. So this is the teaching of Advaita. Not that one should simply declare oneself to be God and then do whatever you want, you know, because whatever you want usually involves the mode of passion and ignorance, isn't it? The senses want to act very freely, but in the mode of goodness, the senses are restrained. They're directed in a narrow path towards the mode of goodness alone, which leads to happiness in this life, detachment, freedom from desires, and ultimately liberation. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.